Hello again and welcome to another video on Eric Flight. Eric here, hope your evening is going well. Uh, this is a continuation of my uh, written exam for the pre-solo, um, which again, if you didn't see the first part of the video, I'm doing a whole series based on the questions that I was asked to answer for my pre-solo written. Um, so today's uh, video deals with stalls and uh, Basically what I'm doing is I'm looking over the questions and I'm seeing what they generally ask about and so we're just going to cover all the questions that would come next on the written, uh, the pre-solo written on uh, stalls. So the first question on the pre-solo exam about stalls is what makes an airplane stall? The answer is when the angle of attack is too great where wind cannot flow over the wing efficiently for lift. What this means is, if you look at the little diagram located on the screen right now, uh, the angle of attack, there's this thing called the chord line, which goes, uh, basically it's a horizontal line that lines up with the middle of the wing, okay? And that chord line determines the angle. And if you look at that, that little diagram we have there, it has the angle of attack as 10 degrees, I believe, in the first one. And you'll notice that the wind is able to flow efficiently over the wing. So you have lift, it creates lift basically. Uh, we'll go over lift in another video, but just know that the angle of attack, the more that you raise it, and that means that you're pulling back on the yoke so that the nose goes up, the angle of attack goes up. So the cord line is moving up vertically on one end of it. And you'll see that in the other two charts on the diagram. And you'll start seeing that they have little uh, churning winds at the end of the uh, wing there. And uh, that, that's basically the beginning of a stall, all right? And even on that little chart that they show you, it shows you the degree at which a wing is going to start stalling. And then at the next diagram, which I believe is 17 degrees of attack, the angle of attack, it shows a lot of the swirly winds. That is when your wing is no longer um, lifting basically and that's what causes a stall and that's when the plane is going to just, just start dropping towards the ground uh, straight towards the ground because you're not producing any lift the next question is how would we recover from a stall that occurs while on approach to land okay now this is why they train you about stalls and what a stall feels like uh, powered on stall a non-powered stall, a stall with flaps that engage and all that stuff. But anyways, to recover from a stall that occurs while on approach to land, you would lower the nose to reduce the angle of attack and add thrust, which is power. You'd add more um, throttle. That's pretty much what you would do on a stall because if you're stalling, that means that your gear speed's too low and the, again, the angle of attack could be too too high and you're not producing lift or you're just going too slow and you're at the stall speed because you're just a little off on the landing um, therefore that's what you want to do and the last question for this video see this is the last one that deals with stalls for now is how would we recover from a stall that occurs on the departure which means after we take off. Now, usually on a departure, you're already on 100% uh, throttle. Your throttle's all the way in because you want to get to that um, climb speed ASAP. Uh, you want the rotation speed to happen as soon as possible because your whole goal on a takeoff is to get up in the air and climbing as soon as possible. The more altitude you have, the safer you are, the more time you have to make decisions in case there's an emergency. But anyways, you would recover from a stall that occurs on the departure after takeoff by lowering the nose or reducing the angle of attack. Now again, I just told you, you're going to probably have max thrust going on, which is max throttle. It's going to be all the way in. So the only real, real way of recovering from a stall is just reducing the angle of attack slightly, not, not all the way. If you have to go on level of flight, that could be a problem. You could be, uh, there could be obstacles up ahead. You might not be... Um, have enough altitude to basically uh, be able to fly straight and level but your goal is to prevent that stall at all costs and do it in a safe manner and that's why when you're already departing and you're on full power 
you just want to lower the nose and reduce the angle of attack so that it's not it's going to build up a little airspeed the uh, wind is going to start flowing over the, the wing efficiently so it cr creates lift okay and that is it for the questions on my written pre soul exam for stalls and overall we're only on question number four uh, the previous video is a little more long-winded uh, because it had to be in order to explain it all and I hope this video helps you out again on your aspirations of becoming a private pilot or even if you're just a flight simmer that wants to know what a private pilot does need to need to know in order to get that license uh, all this stuff can be applicable to what you do in flight simming or even world aviation obviously because you have to take this uh, written uh, pre-solo exam before you can solo hey youtubers if you just enjoyed the video you just watched feel free to push that subscribe button below uh, we appreciate it and also uh, I appreciate you just taking the time to watch my videos I hope you find them useful please post comments I, I will answer them the best I can and if you don't mind if you could also visit my patreon website just to check it out every little bit uh, counts every, everything helps and again the number one thing though is that you keep watching my videos because I really appreciate it thank you